You are, boss. All right, we are back, guys. Just needed to drop the stream for editing purposes. I probably cut myself off there. But for editing purposes, I did cut the stream both times. But we're ready to go. So is Barb ready? Is Barb yeah, ready? Barb is ready. All so. right, the timer has begun. And there are still three more rounds to go, guys. All right, so the reason there is no option for stream quality is you need to be a sponsored stream, or not sponsored by, uh, you're sponsored by Twitch, quote unquote, partnership, yeah. um, in order to unlock stream quality. Yeah, that's why I try to stream at a higher quality. I know for a lot of the low, lower end internets, it, it does go down in quality. It does lag a little bit, unfortunately. But I would, I do like to get, give a good stream quality for you guys. I don't want to... But I am also using XSplit again, just for this this draft, because it was just for the sake of convenience. Alright, and so with the first pick of the fifth round, the Damasio and Doug squad select Tatiana Scarlet. Saw that player in the hype video. And these are substitutes, so they're not uh, limited to any role, so... Tatiana Scarlet did have a highlight play, so... How do you spell the name again? T I T A N I A S C A R L E T with the space between Tatiana and Scarlet. Right, Tatiana go. Scarlet, a plat four uh, sub, plays a lot of Lee Sin, a lot of Thresh, Yasuo, Lucian, Nami, Nidalee, and LeBlanc. So definitely what you're looking for when you want a uh, substitute player. Definitely very multi role, plays jungle, mid AD, some top lane, and even support. So. To fill anything that you want. Definitely. I think I was going to... With that amazing Lee Sin escape. Still can't believe he got away. Yeah, using the W at the last second there to eat the tower shot. Beautiful play. So. And then a very nice kick to start it off. It was a very nice inside kick to make mm -hmm. sure everyone was secured. Um, and so, with the next pick, Shadow Cloud is picked in a Shadow Cloud... Yeah, with that. Ellen Clouds and I, yes. Capitalize. Uh, capitals don't matter in League of Legends. Yeah. But uh, Shadow Cloud showed some of his stuff in the lobbies. Yep. Uh, was he the one that actually played Malphite? I think he was. I'm not sure. He does have a really good KD on Malphite. Uh, I do remember we had a Malphite game where Malphite actually went pretty bonkers. wasn't too, too crazy, but it was really interesting to see because you do not see Malphite every day. Uh, regardless, seems mostly a top lane player. Does frequent by Wukong, Lee Sin, and Alistar as well. Some LeBlanc, but I'm sure that was in the past. Um, so mostly top lane, some mid lane, some jungle. Uh, okay, I'm just getting out. For a second there, that the stream dropped because we have zero viewers. It's kind of bizarre. All right, the next pick, uh, the Shadow Isle Shade Select Example 1013. Example 1013. Gonna get picked up. He's a veteran of former leagues gone by. Plays Syndra, Zed, Lisa, and Ezreal. So a lot of flexibility with Example. Plays a lot of roles. Yeah, these substitutes are definitely people that play very many roles, and so that's pretty important when you're looking at a substitute. Um, the next substitute is Chicken Sandwich. That is a great name. Any funny business with the name, or just straight up sick Chicken Sandwich? No, that's what's great about it. It's just Chicken Sandwich. Chicken Sandwich, a big Lulu solo lane player. Uh, Kale, Morgana, Vayne, Nilly, Caitlyn, and Ezreal. So bottom lane primarily but plays a lot of Lulu and Kale, so also plays in the top lane. Those are the two main bottom lane, top lane. Uh, anywhere else, very rare, it seems. So for another flex pick, that's what we're expecting from all these, these subs, are some flexible picks. Because if someone's missing, and you don't have a top laner, that is a problem. Yep, the next substitute, the Noxian Elite, select Acapella Severe. Acapella 
is an old friend of mine from, again, another league on bot gone past. I forgot, actually, forgot to mention the league to him. Oh, it's actually in round five now. Let me update that. And he said, hey, I want to, I said to him about it, and he signed up, and fortunately goes a little bit late. He's a, quite the player. Plays a lot of roles, though, so he'll be a great addition to the bench of the Noxian Elite. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of these bench players, like just looking at what they play and how well they play, I wouldn't see surprise, like be surprised to see some roster swaps around in the league. Um, these substitute players are a little bit more than just trophies. They are players that like other teams may really want, mm -hmm. and so some solid trades probably going to be happening somewhere yeah. around the league. And it's possible that you know scrims don't go too well. You bring in your sub. You the, one of these subs could easily be making to the starting roster. Yeah, and a lot of it, you know, if you don't get along with someone either, you, it's not fun to play with people you don't enjoy playing with. You want to have a very high morale roster. Like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, my best friend, blah, blah, blah. Like, you, yeah, you just have to be able to talk to your... Not like CLGEU singing uh, Eye of the Tiger at Worlds. We're not, yes. we're not expecting everyone to be like that, but we're hoping everyone has a good time with their team. But sometimes roster swaps need to happen. Yep. And so the next substitute pick is Scotty Smalls. Scotty Smalls frequented the lobbies, getting picked up in the fifth round. And Scotty Smalls, mostly a yeah, all but a six as a bottom lane player, really, really favors that bottom lane. Plays Vayne, Tristana, Karma, Braum, Graves, and Zyra, and then Akali is the only one that's a little weird. Um. We got a bot lane specialist here. Picking a bot lane the... And who plays for the Cathy and Void? I uh, don't remember the AD carry on that team. That is me, me, me. Oh, me, me. Okay, so, you know, some. Maybe even, like, these play. Another big thing about being a substitute on the team is you're able to, like, talk with your teammates and, like, learn some more. Grow as a player. It's a big thing. Because a lot of people are, like, not fortunate enough to have friends that play League of Legends. Um,. And so this league gives people a chance to just make some, meet some new people and uh, learn people from that are a little bit better than you, possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could even teach your teammates something. Um, anyway, with the next pick, the Frozen Freljord go with Wooly Cow. Wooly Cow. Wool with two O's, one L, a Y, and then a cow. So Wool, yep. Y, Cow. Wool, Y, Cow. I got that. <laughs> I thought there were two L's initially, but I got it. Wooly Cow came to the lobbies pretty late, but showed up and had some good impact in the bottom lane. But definitely Fox Black plays a Moo Moo, Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, not much ranked games. But... Uh, no, but for what he does have, wait, oh my god, I'm not, I hate OPGG, man, it takes forever. But yeah, so, if you look at normals, man, he hasn't even played that many normals. Uh, it seems mostly AD carry, though. In normals, but jungle and ranked. Uh, Yasuo, just because he's fun, I'm sure. And then uh, Gragas. Uh, looks like a top lane Gragas, so. Interesting. But yeah, lately it seems like a lot of AD carry. The thing is, AD carry is a very highly uh, mechanical role. And so AD carry tend to be able to switch to other roles pretty flawlessly. Um, it takes them a little bit of time to learn matchups and such, but once you're past that, it's pretty easy to get used to any other champion. Um, regardless, with the final pick of the fifth round, the Pub Stop Poros go with SNI 95R. SNI 95R? Yep. I think, oh, I get it. Sniper. I think that's what it's meant to, it's meant to say. SNI 95R? Yep. Okay. So he's going to take a short break so I can get his name in. Oh, that's not what I want. No. There, no. There we go. And like the sniper he is, he plays a lot of Kog'Maw, a lot of AD carry as well. Uh, jungle and Yasuo. So again, you get these people that play primarily one role, jungle, and then one champion like Yasuo. And so another multi-role Substitute. Nothing too straightforward. Into round six. It's round six. There's two rounds left. And with the first pick in the sixth round, the Damasian Dunk Squad pick Z Spencer. Z 
Matthew Spencer. Yep. Um, I believe was a veteran is a veteran of the first league. Uh, yeah, I believe so. I misspelled his name. Is it Spencer with a C? Yeah, I I'm I'm dumb. I spelled see, Spencer I'm, with a C. I'm good. I'm glad, I'm glad people can't see my screen because they would see me trying to type cloud with an I at the end, thinking the L is in next. See, to the I knew that. So. The C, not the D. Yeah, some some weird stuff. But I'm mostly copy pasting, so I'm a bit more fortunate than you. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, he frequents support jungle. That's about it. Some top lane Maokai, I assume. Some Zed recently, but yeah, so mostly uh, support, jungle. Um, definitely, definitely good to have on your team. Yeah, a lot of. Oh, it didn't scroll down. It's not a new new. It's plays actually a lot of everything, actually, lately. But, Thresh Elise. Kazakh Jarvan, so very flexible player. Jungle support. Very high KDAs on these champions as well. Even though they're low amount of games, 4.5, 4.8, 3.9, 3.6, 4.3, 3.4, .3, and a 2.95 right next to three. So very, very impressive play coming from the Gold 5Z Spencer. Mm -hmm. And now to our next pick, we have Chios, Cheetos, C E or C E A I O S. Cheetos. Cheetos, yes. Uh, Cheetos. Cheetos. Cheetos was in a couple lobbies. Um, a pretty... Uh, as of recent, Xerath, Lissandra, Twitch, Rise, Vayne, Trist, and Elise. So playing pretty much a little bit of everything. Um, it's one of those people, I guess, that doesn't really stick to one role. It actually seems like out of the match history, it's mostly AD carry, especially Vayne, Lucian, Jinx. So I would assume mostly AD carry. But could be anything. Yep. Very flexible player. And with the next pick, a name I realized wasn't even taken yet. Zaylor the Emperor. Oh wow, Zaylor. So Zaylor's gonna go in the sixth round. Value. Yeah, Zaylor is very pretty. He played in the first season. Um, okay, I can't spell Emperor. I'm bad. E P O R E R. E R O R. E R O R. Oh my goodness. It's not Emperor. Oh my goodness. Emperor. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, regardless, uh, Zaylor plays a little bit of everything. He plays mostly support, though. Uh, Tristana when he... I guess a lot, actually. A lot of Tristana. A lot of Jarvan, Nocturne, Thresh. Mostly Jarvan and Thresh recently, but... So, mostly a jungle and support player. From Zaylor the Emperor. Maybe we'll get to see Top Yi in one of these games. I don't know. I don't think we will, but... Yeah, seeing Zaylor's Master would be hilarious. It's pretty funny that he doesn't play it once in rank. Yeah, this is the only champion I've ever seen him play. That's, like, uh, that's, what, was... I know, that's what we know him for. It's I know, and there, was one, and there was one time where it got banned and he didn't get to play Master Yi. So, I mean, it's it's weird. Uh, there's things about... Wait, what? Um, Hey, Barb, that person's already picked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I was just talking to myself. Um, Barbara Show sent me a name of someone that was already picked, so. Unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit for the next pick. Someone very high demand um, in the draft, in the substitute role. Uh. The Shadow Isle Shades. That is the Slice team, I believe, right? I can check. So. That is. That's no. That is the Stream Scorpions. Oh, so Shadow of Shades is who's the captain of that one? That is Plague. All right, Plague's team. I like that. I like Plague and Zem or Zaylor on the same team. All right. Regardless, we got uh, next pick is Goats are here. Literally, Goat space R space here. With an R or A R E? A R E. We send Master Yi, Thresh, Darius, Yasuo, Trinomir, Graves. So we got top lane jungle, AD carry support. He's a filler. 
Yeah, the big thing about a lot of these players in solo queue in general is you don't usually get your roll um, consistently. So especially in lower out you lows. Yeah, so that definitely could be a thing. Like that, a lot of these players that in the subs they made look like they play a lot of a certain like role or a lot of different roles. They may not be as great in these roles. They might have one or two specific roles that they are very uh, proficient at. It sounds like that uh, he was actually in this in the league last year, last 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 season, because he was on the rank five teams with the pub Samparos. So looks like a returning face. Yep, and hey, so with the, oh, oh, next pick. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Slim Frusa. Uh, Slim as in he's skinny. Yep. And Frusa as in F R E W S A. Um, sounds like Frieza, but it's Frusa. Saw Slim in some lobbies. He played well. He played well. Got him. Was a got him drafted in the sixth round. Yeah, just showing up even a little bit uh, made the world of difference for some of these players. Um, you know, some people that were high priority last time because I feel like it was a bit more rushed in the trial season. We didn't have that many lobbies. This time we had a week full of lobbies. It was, you know, you got a lot of games, a lot of players, and so certain people didn't show up and they fell behind in draft rounds. And so playing was very important, mm -hmm. especially if you played well. Although I will say there were certain players that never showed up to a trial draft and still got drafted very early. And uh, those are the people to watch out for who might not show up. So if you're a sub, be ha look for those players. <laughs> yep. And More so with the next pick, the Cathy and Void go with best rice cooker. Uh, best rice cooker. One word? I don't think it matters. Yeah, it does not matter. It does not matter in League of Legends. Um... Fortunately, that team will not go hungry. They have the best rice cooker in all the lands. He plays a lot of Riven. Um, Riven, pretty good. Uh, Kazakh, Lee Sin, Leona, Elise, Nidalee, and Annie. So, mostly uh, all over the place. Uh, jungle and top lane, what I'd say the big ones. He has Annie and Leona that are supports uh, in solo queue. You do end up getting forces with a support role a lot, especially if you're very lenient as a player. Plays Yasuo a good amount in normals because it's impossible to in ranked. So that's where he is with that. And on to the next pick. The Frozen Freljord goes with Kyloth. I believe that is a she. If I remember correctly. Yeah, unless what? there was two people playing on the account. I when I played with Kyloth, it's a it was a girl, but it could have been a her Boyfriend's account. I don't know. Uh, regardless, Kyloth plays a lot of AD carry. Uh, Jinx, Lucian, Ash, Vayne. Uh, some support. Kale played support Gragas in the lobby. Yeah, it was played really well in Gragas in the lobbies. Uh, in the clip, what was she? A new uh, no. no. That was that was Chris. She was Leona. She was Leona. Yeah, she was Leona with the the three man so. ulti for Sinsanity land the giant burst from Annie. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Kyloth is a girl. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you're playing the was, game. Was on Chris Hansen's team last season. So, yeah. maybe some comfort there as the backup support. So. Yeah, so that's a... Uh, mostly support plays a lot of AD, though. And mm -hmm. so, very bot lane oriented player. It was previously known as KY Eats Dinosaur, if anyone played in the last, last split. The last season, the trial season. Last pick of the sixth round is is what we are waiting on. Is the pick in? Just got in. We have Jace Main picked in the final pick of the sixth round. Jace Main, very happy to be picked. Um, I got to play against Zudir. Ended up beating me with it, although I, I'm very salty about it because I don't think it was him. And he brings it up every time that he beat me. But regardless, he gets picked as the final pick in the sixth round. Plays mostly jungle, especially Udir, regardless of his name being Jace Main. Um, outside of that, I don't know what he plays outside of Udir. Is the big thing. 
Uh, G plays 25 games GS, 9, 13 games with Udyr with a 92 win rate. Yep, so we were talking about that 83 earlier. win rate with Melkai, but only 6 games played. Does have 25 JS games, but I haven't got to see his JS yet, so... Uh, some very impressive win rates in KDAs on his account, though. Uh, Maokai, Tristana, Sivir, uh, Udyr, obviously, Lee Sin, Jace, Jax, uh, everything. Uh, very well played on his account. Into round seven, the last final round. We have Dr. Teddy Bear. Dr. Teddy Bear. I'm assuming spelt as I would assume. Is that what he was picked? Sorry, hold on, I just wanted to really guard what happened. Who got picked? Dr. Teddy Bear? Dr. Teddy Bear, is that the pick? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Sorry. You could have just been saying that, man. I don't know. Oh, my bad. Um, Looks like a Shaco player. 59 games of Shaco, 51 games is Morg. You, you know, something that would be really interesting because he's a Shaco player, it'd be interesting to see if the team thought, oh, I, we want to play Shaco in this composition. Let's sub out our jungler for this game because this jungler plays Shaco at a much higher level. Um, this could happen with other junglers as well. So it would be very interesting to see if that did happen. Um, within the league, you know, you have a eight-man roster, so it wouldn't be completely out of this world to use your substitutes on a somewhat rotation, right? Mm -hmm. um, he also frequents Morgana, mostly towards seems like a jungler uh, with Shago, with a Mumu and uh, Vi. So, uh, and in normal, it seems like a lot of jungles, a lot of smites there. Oh wow! And so with the second pick in the round, seventh round, the Shreema Scorpion select a Lothian. The Lothian did show up to Lobbyus. Played played well. Everyone played played well. Didn't play in too many though, so maybe not got enough exposure to really get a higher pick. Silver four. Yeah, that's it. Could have been that. I mean, if you don't play in too many lobbies, like we have the restrictions where you can't like spam play lobbies, but you could play in at least one a day. And so I don't think we saw the Lothian too too much. Fortunately, he did play enough to get his name out there, enough to get picked, so. Yes. And so he ends up a very good new new win rate, a very good mass for you win rate, but not many ranked games, so yes. it's well, a bit hard to say. A little hard to say. Only 27 ranked games this season. And maybe, with the third... Been, oh, go ahead. There you go. Go ahead. Elaborate. I was say maybe, maybe a little scare, a little scary from uh, an order perspective, not having played too much ranked. Yeah, it could be on nerves. There's definitely nerves involved in ranked, um, especially for the first game of the day. After that, your nerves start to settle when you get used to something. But mm -hmm. regardless, if you don't play that much, I don't play that much. Um, it's a nerves thing, and I don't really care to play. Um, but regardless, uh, Dark Bori is the next pick, the third pick in the round of seven. Dark Bori? Yeah, D-A-R-K-B-O-R-R-I. What was the second half after, after Dark? D-A-R-K? E B no dark is how you spell dark yes yeah I know Bori is B O R R I All right. okay B O R R I like I'm gonna put an extra R ah. check out what Dark Bori has in store for us Dark Bori uh, wow so a lot of Draven a lot of Vayne Wukong Renekton Lucian Caitlyn and Rengar. So jungler and AD mostly. Uh, some top lane Renekton and, and maybe top lane uh, Rengar. Not sure. Um, so those are his main champs. It seems. Uh, as of recent, in normals plays just about anything. It seems more top lane though. Yeah, well, Vayne, Draven, Lucian, Caitlyn. A lot of AD carry play. But as well, Renekton, Wukong, Rengar plays a lot of Bruisers as well. He does indeed. And so, with the next pick in the round of seven, um, just really quick, who is the Piltover's finest coach? Is it Matrix Burden? Matrix Burden. And he will pick his friend Matrix Python in the round of seven. Or the seventh round, not round of seven. Not a big surprise here. Uh, no, it was going to come sooner or later had Matrix Python not been picked up. I feel like they do prefer to be on the same team as they do have some familiarity uh, with each other. No, they do have the same tag. They so. do do a lot. Yeah, so there it is. Um, maybe expected Python to go 
Maybe he expected him to go later in the draft because he did not play in more than, I believe, one lobby, maybe two. And so... He played a bit on Saturday. Oh, so I right. wasn't... I was gone. So I was not here for those, but... And so the next pick is a name I've been waiting for for a while, Anivia Nivia GG. Um, it took a while. Anivia Nivia is an expert Anivia player. Outside of that, plays pretty much anything. Um, but definitely focus around that mid lane. Oh, wait. Oh, come on, Barbs. What? I said it, but I wasn't supposed to report it. So don't write down a Nivia Nivia GG yet. Oh. Yeah, oh. sorry about that. Um, picks might change. That's what I'll have to see. Would have been a good pick. Yeah, Nivia Nivia is very talented. Um, has room to grow as a player, so. All right, so the pick was changed. It's going to be the Crusher Crush. The Crusher Crush. And then right after is a Nivia Nivia GG. So you could write both of them down. A Nivia Nivia GG will go to the Cathian Void. Crusher Crush will go to the Noxian Elite. So let's take a quick pause here on the draft. Just not too long. We'll go quickly over the Crusher Crush and then on to the Nivia Nivia GG, then restart the clock. Yeah, um... Crusher Crush was like, that's the one that's up on your screen right now. So yes. we have Yasuo, Thresh, Bane, Draven, Kaelin, Lucian, Lee Sin. Very focused on the bottom lane. Some Yasuo, again, he's a champion that a lot of people really enjoy playing, and so he's going to see play um, around various roles. Yeah, a lot of Mumu, 72 Mumu games. Zed. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the big thing. He played a lot of jungle Mumu when he did not play in Nivea. Uh, pretty much every single game he played jungle of Mumu, and he actually. He has a very uh, high EP build. He doesn't build tank Amumu, which is actually like something that like I criticize pretty heavily in lobbies, but it worked out for him in a lot of games. He was able to snowball games pretty much by himself with his ultimate, you know, chunking people for half their HP. So maybe Team Composition says, hey, we want to play Amumu. They got a Amumu player on their team now. They do, but it's it's different because Anivia Anivia does not play a standard Amumu. He plays oh, a very... I was on first... Crusher. Oh, you were talking about Anivia GG. I was talking about yeah. Crusher Crush. Crusher Crush plays in Mumu as plays well. Plays Mumu as well. 72 Mumu games on, on Crusher Crush. Oh, wow. So two big Mumu players. Yeah. And, well, I was talking about Anivia Anivia. Uh, I don't know Crusher Crush is a Mumu personally. I've just seen Anivia Anivia's, mm -hmm. which was an AP of Mumu. This one could be probably a tank of Mumu. Who knows? So, yeah. Uh, Mumu is another one of those champions where uh, the bandage takes a little bit of getting used to. So Yeah, another a lot of games on Mumu here. We're going to start the clock back up. But yeah, a lot of Anivia. Not the most impressive win rate or KDA, but... You know, As... he's, he's played it so much, though. And you, like, when you play a champion 359 games in Season 4, you know you know how to play that champion. You may not play the best Anivia in the world, but you play that champion better than most Anivia players. Uh, most people that don't even play Anivia. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm sure he has a very good grasp on Anivia as well as Amumu. Anivia takes a lot of finesse to really work. Yeah, the he... walls are not easy to, not easy to place. There's a lot of different tricks with Anivia, like hiding your attack and using the wall effectively. And this is a very complex champion. Straightforward in skills, but very complex in mindset and what you need to do. And so, with the next pick, the... Uh, Frozen Freljord. Frozen Freljord, select Mr. Fluffles. We're going on to the last pick of the draft. We'll look into Mr. Fluffles. Played in a few lobbies. Played a, a Teemo one game. Did not go too well for him. He had trouble in lean a lot. That was a, one problem with Mr. Fluffles, but... Yeah, he, uh, he was the big Victor player. He loves Victor mid. Yeah. He plays it every chance he gets, and so that's very niche. Um, had some... He He's very inconsistent. Uh... No offense to him. He either does really well in lane or he just gets completely eradicated out of it. Like, And he won't feed particularly. Like, He won't feed off a lot of deaths. He just won't really do anything because he's there's, too scared. He's too weak to really go in. So. There's a lot of times where he'll be down 50 CS, and that's a, that's a problem when uh, trying to really yeah, he, take advantage in lane. If you're down yeah. basically three kills, that could be a problem. But on the flip side of things, when he gets his victor going, he's hitting those death lasers, and he's hitting those last hits. Man, Mr. Fuffles Victor is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, no has, has a problem in the laning phase, but if he can get out of it, yeah. he can be he can be a definitely a strong player. Very strong player. So 
nothing unique to describe him at all. And so, with the final pick... And I want to I want to say, just before this pick, to anyone who does not get drafted, you will have opportunities to make teams. I can, I can nearly guarantee it, so do not be discouraged if you are not picked with this pick. But last pick of the draft is... Not here yet. Not here yet. Not here yet. <laughs> yeah, N-O-T-H-E-R-E, -E yet. Y3. Oh, this is this is the draft. I was like, this is the pick. I was like, thought you were telling me not here yet. No, I'm just joking with you. There's no pick yet. Oh my goodness. You can't. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, there's no pick name not here yet. I'm just waiting on the last one. There will be all the free agents up in some corner somewhere. Something I think in the bottom of the Twitch page or I have no idea. Uh, Barb says that. All the free agents will be put in the bottom right corner of somewhere. So look in the bottom right corner and you may find the pick. I believe it'll be of the Google Doc that's up on screen. But don't uh, don't quote me on that. So we're waiting on the last pick from the Pub Stomp Poros. This is Hirabashi GG's team. Yeah, definitely taking his time here with his last pick. Um, probably just looking through these last players. It's it's not like the game-breaking pick, but it could be very important down the line. Definitely got some very good uh, picks already with Jace Main and uh, Sniper. So and He does have mayonnaise on his team, so you guys will all be fed well. Oh, man. And wow, so someone in chat is going to be very, very happy. Josh Crafter is the final pick in round seven. He will be going on Hurabashi's uh, team. That was Josh Crafter? Yeah, Josh Crafter. He's been talking in chat a lot. They've been very active, so I'm happy to see him get drafted onto a team. Um, we'll take a look at his lead profile really quick, and then you guys will see the rest of the free agents in the bottom corner somewhere. Trying to find out where. But Josh Crafter plays AD carry. Uh, yep, a lot of AD carry, a lot of Vi as well in solo queue. He's played a lot of games of solo queue in the past 30 days. That's pretty important. Being an active player and getting better at the game is very important. I'm surprised the Gold Four is actually the last pick as well. It's not a particularly low rank for our league. So. Um, but yeah, happy to see him drafted. Uh, for everyone else that was not drafted, your names will be popping up on the screen soon. These people will be free agents. These people will be picked up by teams very likely when they have to draw players that do not show up to practice or if they have internal conflicts. So these players will be there. Um, you can see them popping up on screen right now. And if you guys are active in the community and you're still in chat and something hit comes up, I guarantee, I'm actually very surprised that Banzer did not get drafted. That is the one person I am stunned. For Totally forgot about him. Yeah, Major X as well was putting on uh, pretty good shows in lobbies. Was um, in that highlight video with... Yes, yeah, so there's, a, there's a lot of talent that unfortunately just didn't have a spot. Zeta is another one. That's, I'm actually really surprised they got Banzer, like you said. So some pretty big talent that yeah, is... Banzer was holding pretty... his own. He's silver, but he was definitely holding his own in these lanes. Playing AD carry a lot, but... And I played really well in all the, in all the, all the games I remember him in. So I am surprised he did not get drafted, but an SMG Phoenix, the last free agent. So there's a lot of free agents that are very, very strong players, and I'm sure players that are going to get a look at at some point during the season. Um, it's not a short time coming. The season does have a lot of games left. There's still the playoffs that have to go through, so roster changes aren't out of the question whatsoever, even after the first day of drafting. Also, Rot Panda not getting drafted. So we have a few, few notables not getting drafted. Yeah, and it's really unfortunate. I mean, you can't. It's just not possible to have everyone be on a team. Uh, the big thing I do recommend to these players is look at these free agents. Add them on League of Legends. Add them to your own team and just play. Um, just get better at rank fives. Learning from them in solo queue. Like, you don't have to just be down in the dumps because it wasn't like you that got drafted. Like you could still make the best of a not so great situation. Most definitely. But guys, that was the draft. We just let this 
up, I guess, because there's still names being added by the second. I think that's everyone. I don't think we had too many more people who did not sign up. Okay, yeah, that will be it then. And we wanted to do another round, guys, but we do realize that rosters might have an issue with filling rosters at some point. We, we are concerned with that because sometimes uh, things can happen. People get commitments or they just don't have time to play and people do drop out. So we wanted to make sure there were free agents for all teams to take in consider into consideration. We didn't want to gate the teams too hard. Yeah, the big thing is you don't want a team with four substitutes on and then a team that can't even feel the team. And yeah. the, that team with substitutes is just greedy. They don't wanna, yeah. you know, we want to, you know... We want we want games to happen. We realize that uh, free agents can fill, the, can fill the role. So be active in the community if you are in, in Twitch. And I can guarantee you, almost, gar almost guarantee you, you'll be, able, you'll be able to play this season. And listen, you could even add me and complain to me about how much this sucks. Because I, I love hearing it. Um, I could take anything. I talk to people really well. If you guys need someone to talk to, I'm here. You can have me, Van Dees. I'm sure you could talk to Foss about it. Yes. At him, you could talk to Barbacoa. You could have to talk to pretty much anyone on this list, and I'm sure they'll be happy to talk League of Legends or, you know, regardless, uh, with you. So, I'm happy for everyone that got drafted. Happy for everyone. And I hope everyone finds a nice home on their team, and I hope that our serious gaming season one season is very successful. A little over, I think it's going to be a little over a month. Maybe a little, a little over a month. We're going to be already in playoffs, and we're going to see who wins the big RP prize and triumphant rise. It's going to be a roller coaster of a season, guys. I hope you guys all stick around. Once again, I'm going to show off the first four rounds oh, for everyone. Pause. Yep. Want to go over the captains? Captains. Like, we didn't go over the OPGGs of the captains. Do you want to do that? Um, I, I guess it's fair enough, right? Sure, we could do that. We'll start with him. We'll start with uh, Emil Heskey is best. We'll work our way down. Emil, I don't even know how to spell it. Heskey is best. I got it. Okay. Emil, big mid lane player. Uh, favorite champions off the top of my head: Kali, Katarina, mm -hmm. uh, some Fizz. So looks like he played a lot of Nidalee. Maybe this is an older Nidalee. Maybe he just plays top lane. No, it looks like a little, the old Nidalee. AP Nidalee. AP Nidalee was a monster in the middle lane. So part of Emil's champion pool. Um, actually, top champions. Oh wait, those aren't them. Still like waiting. T ten games on Blitzcrank in the last thirty days, so it feels like that's maybe his go-to support. And so, look, you got a seventy-four percent win rate, but successful on Katarina, Kali, Oriana. Yep, Oriana as well. So that'll be Emil Husky. We got Why I Try. Um, right off the top of my head, a big Zillion player. Morgana. Morgana play. Oh yeah. Why am I saying Zillion? Morgana, yeah. His Morgana's the main uh main thing. He plays a mid, top, jungle, AD carry, support, uh, coaching. <laughs> plays Morgana anywhere he can get it. Usually banned away from him, but uh if he does get it and it has the chance to pick it, you know it's instantly getting locked in. Five KDA with Morgana in hundred and six games. That is impressive. And that's why he never gets to play it. Um, that's that's why I don't think he'll ever get to play it. Yeah, it really, really sucks to be why trying this in area. Though with players like Damasta and Deslice maybe taking bands away, they're going to have to consider maybe giving Morgana to why I try some games. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. Giving someone someone that's a 5 KDA over 100-something games, true, true. that's pretty hard to give them a champion. Um, so, unfortunate for why I try, but maybe he could pull it off somehow. Some mind games. Maybe you get a name change or something. No one will expect it. And on to BBV Plague. You need to play with who I thought why. Try was for a second. Uh, plays a lot of Morgana, Thresh, Zillion, Braum, Nami. Plays all the big supports. Yeah, we Been had trying to, out Lux we, support recently. We had to pull his teeth in order to make him play ranked. He did go do ranked when nine and one in his in his place in matches got placed in gold five. Definitely deserving of that. Nine and one is not easy to achieve in any span of games. No, yeah, not at go all. go out and try going nine and one in normals right now, guys. It's not easy. So he went 9-1 in ranked, got gold 5, and really good on Morgana. Yeah, very high win rates on a lot of champions. Very impressive. Uh, plays a lot of ranked 5s. Yes, plays a lot of normals with his BBV friends as well. Um, mm -hmm. 
UVV is a pretty big community, and so I'm sure there's more than just playing in his group. There's a lot of UVVs out there. But yeah, that's cool. Um, and so, we're on to Matrix Burden. Uh, favorite game of Matrix Burden? AP Corky. Corky. AP yeah. Corky. He loves that AP Corky, and man, it is it is so good. Uh, he completely wrecked the one game I got to see with it. It looks like he doesn't even break it out that often. But when he does, it, it's awesome. Uh, I can't wait until we get to cast a game where he does it again. A lot of poke, great laning, um, a lot of skill shots just make explosions and people blow up and it's just really fun to watch. Uh, he also frequents Orianna, he plays Zed, plays Yasuo, so he plays a lot of meta mid laners and I'm sure AP Core he's just not his only pick. On TSM Diamond, who's gonna play AD Carry for the Noxian Elite? Gold four. Plays a lot of Lucian Caitlyn and Jinx as his AD carries picks. Yeah, uh, Tyson Diamond is the AD carry for his team. Plays Lucian a lot. Lucian, you know, argue is the best early game AD carry. Uh, probably the best mid game AD carry. Falls late to Tristana Kogma, uh, Jinx stuff like that. But he's still very very good in the late game. And so you know he's that number like one AD carry for him. Uh, he had that point where he was the strongest for a while. Now you could say he's number two, tied close with number one, uh, with Tristana. Still very strong, even after his changes. On to Medical 4. Oh, uh, I suck. Alright. Medical 4, Diamond 5. Diamond 5, Captain. So. Playing top lane, if... OPGG would ever load. I hate this. Lee Sin, Renekton, Jace, Aurelia, Riven, Aatrox. So a lot of Champions Wheelhouse. A lot of Lee Sin. 213 games. A lot of Renekton. 142. The big thing is Aatrox probably new. Aatrox yep. was kind of okay for a while. But like ever since like Freddy broke it out the other day. <laughs> Freddy, to game, be fair, if you watch ELCS, he's been pulling that out a lot. Yeah, but it, just that game in Worlds, just seeing it. Uh, everyone's playing Aatrox now. Oh, it, did, it didn't get banned one game? Yeah, you gotta, so, you gotta ban Freddy's Aatrox, that's crazy, whoever did yeah. do that. And so, Aatrox played all the time now, uh, I feel like it's something new, yeah, it looks like he played it a lot recently, so, maybe seeing some Aatrox, some Aurelia, some, you know, those bruisers that just put out a ton of damage. From Medico 4, finally, up to Chris Hansen. And what's the champion we associate with Chris Hansen the most? Uh, the Rage Quitter. No, I'm just messing with you. Uh, he loves Draven. He goes Draven. so deep on Draven. He'll kill himself ten times over for a kill because it's all about that money. It's all about the passive money. Chris Hansen goes off when he gets first blood. I've never seen someone make me not want to play a game more than when Chris Hansen gets first blood. <laughs> um, that is very true. It's very scary when Chris Hansen's able to tower dive you as Draven and gets away with it. And then when he doesn't, you just laugh at him and like, wow, Hansen, you suck. But uh, Hansen, a very fun AD carry to watch. Um, very entertaining overall with his Draven play. Also plays Lucian a lot, who is very lane dominant again. So definitely wants to win his lane in pretty much every game. That's As we said earlier, Zig 2 going to have to be the lost boy to Chris Hansen's Wild Turtle. Yeah, Chris Hansen's a, just a little wild. And so, on to the last captain, Hurubashi GG. I'm not familiar at all with Hurubashi GG. He will be jungling for the pubs on Poros. Um, he plays a lot of Evelyn and Blitzcrank, but Blitzcrank's not really a jungler. Evelyn is, though. He plays a Moo Moo. Um, and outside of that, Kha'Zix. Um, he actually doesn't play much Lee Sin, which is surprising. Every jungler has been playing Lee Sin recently. Mm -hmm. So, definitely uh, leaning a bit more towards those AP, uh, po or AP, yeah, just AP in general, ultimate focused uh, junglers like Evelyn and a Moo Moo. That's all the captains. The draft is done. Wow. This has been a, a nice hour, little, almost two hours. Hours. And felt like went by so fast. You guys saw the hype video. The hype video will, will be on YouTube for viewing. I'm, I will say, guys, the quality probably won't get too much better than you saw on stream because there were some issues with videos and the quality as they got transferred from Twitch to Chris Hansen's computer, so unfortunately the quality is
was not able to be fixed before it went live. But it's there. It's a good video, regardless. It's fun to watch. It's really exciting to see your name up there on a billboard. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, great video. You guys could check it out on the YouTube link. It's somewhere um, in the chat box. And somewhere out there. And, yeah, so is that, is that all we're doing tonight, Foz? Yes, that's what we're here for. Games will begin Friday around 9. I think we might have an early game at 8 o'clock Eastern. But we'll be have... Every team will be playing Friday night. It's the it's week one of the SGL, the Serious Gaming League. I can't wait, guys. I'll be there casting. Vamps, will you be there with me? Yeah, pretty likely. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm Vamps, and he's Foz, and we're here from the drafting desk. It was nice having this with you guys. We'll see you guys next time.